All right. Good morning. How's everybody doing on this Saturday? I tend to only know when it's the weekend, apparently. Um, so I'm just doing a refresher to make sure that everything's showing up on your guys' end. And this is Paint with Lovejoy. We are going to be painting a bobcat today. There we go. Everything's looking good. And I will be using a brush to paint today's painting. Um, some of the other demos I have used a traceable, uh, or I'm sorry, I have used a palette knife, but today we'll be using a brush. So a little bit of what you're looking at. Um, I am using a fresh canvas panel. Uh, some of the other demos will have the texture on it and I'll talk about the uh, resurfacing, reusing a canvas. But for our outline here, you've got two options today. You can pause the video, draw what you see, and then pick up this video for the painting portion, or there's a link in the description box below. You can jump to my website, um, purchase and download the traceable, and then using carbon paper, you can transfer it to your canvas and then pick up the painting portion again. And the traceable is a nice way for my first time painters to get their initial image on the canvas. Um, and it takes away the frustration of trying to draw and then you can jump right into painting. So whichever option that you prefer, go for that. Um, and let's see, so I'm gonna start on the background and we're gonna make a teal background and then I'll be going through some shades of um, kind of some lighter tans, the raw sienna, then we'll go a little bit darker shadow here on the back. And then we've got some, some spots and some markings and then those very distinctive little bobcat uh, tips of the ears. So, all right. And if you have any questions today, please feel free to leave a comment in the chat and I will address your question while I'm painting. Um, and we're developing a really nice community here. It makes me really happy. Um, but I'll, I'll look over in the chat and you guys are talk talking amongst yourself, chatting. And, you know, I love that everybody says hi to each other uh, when they jump on. So just, it's, it's a good little community. So hi, Denise. I see that you're already on here. Thanks. Hope you're having a good afternoon, I think, for you. Um, all right, so we're making a light teal, or kind of a medium teal, and you can uh, change the shade, you can make it darker or lighter. And we're gonna be going from the edges of the lines to the edges of the canvas. So as you're painting, try a few brush strokes. You've got kind of your full width one like that one. You can turn that brush sideways, it creates a skinnier line. And then a favorite one, making X marks and literally slapping your brush on the canvas. So try all three of those as you are applying your paint. And that way you can discern which one you're finding a little more fun for today or a little bit more comfortable. So, and if you have any frustrations, anxieties, things that's pissed you off this week, literally slap it into the paint, slap it onto your canvas. And it's very therapeutic. So you will notice that while you're painting, you kind of escape the world for a little bit. And that is the beautiful reason for painting. So as I'm painting here, I'm actually going to chop off um, those cute little tips for the bobcat ears. Uh, we will reapply them at the end of the painting when we move into the black and uh, just paint right over this color. So as you paint anything with acrylic paint, if you paint something in an area you don't, uh, wasn't supposed to go if you paint your background on the inside of your uh, animal or if you just completely need to change something acrylic paint dries really nicely and pretty solid so you can always put another layer of acrylic paint and cover up anything that you might deem as a mistake or something that you don't want so a good versatile medium acrylic paint for those that are starting out painting All right, and I see a few more jumping on. Hi, V. Hi, Rhonda and Denise. Awesome, awesome. Hope you guys are having a good Saturday morning. We got a little bit of sun here in California. Um, I do live closer to the to the beach, to the coastline, so half the time the darker or the clouds will burn away by 11 or 12 o'clock. All right, so on your background, if you want to go a place that's a little bit darker, I'm going to grab some of that direct heel. You literally slap it on there, slap it on your background. And then I like to wipe the excess paint off my brush. And then just with a nice back and forth swaying motion, um, just kind of blending that new color into the background. And this is called wet on wet blending. 
and the more you move your brush the more it kind of mixes together so if you slap that color on there and then you realize it diffused rather quickly like the white the lighter colors will diffuse very quickly in there um, if that happens to you like if you move it too much and then yep you can't even tell where i put the white just repeat the process slap it on there and then maybe with less brush strokes just blend that into it this is also a nice place to finger paint so feel free to do that but literally this is just your time your escape from the rest of the world to just get creative and any of this wet on wet blending you do want to do it while your paint is wet uh, you can't really do it once it's dry so anything that you want to your background do it now um, and then we're going to move into painting our bobcat now for the wet on wet blending if you want to add a different color if you wanted to throw some blue in there or even some yellow you are more than welcome to do that so again trust your instincts and just have fun all right so nice little background and like i said i'm really happy that i got all my uh, fresh panels in i finally pulled them out of the car a couple days ago and for the next, I believe, six demos, I already have the traceables up on the website. I'm getting a little more organized and planning. Um, so if you want to purchase them kind of at one time or just knowing what we're going to be painting in the future and what it'll look like, you can jump on over to that. Um, also, in the description box, quite a few of you have asked about me selling the samples. I do have a link down there to my portfolio and you can just jump to the sale. And pretty much everything that I paint now, um, unless I absolutely don't like it, will go on the sample sale. Okay, so let's see. We're going to start off with kind of a medium raw sienna. So we're going to be adding a little bit of white to this. And then we'll go a little bit darker and then we'll go a little bit lighter. So kind of like we did with the background, we're going to put our base color on. And then we're going to put some lighter and darker shades on there. So I'm going to grab a chunk of that tan or the raw sienna, pull it out. I'm gonna grab, go in about a one to one ratio today for this. So just kind of toning it down. There we go, that's a pretty good color. And then like I said, we will be putting darker and lighter on top of this. All right, so kind of easiest to start with first, we're gonna do the body. And again, just going right up to those lines. And we're gonna fill this whole space in. And then like I said, we're gonna put some darker spaces on top of it and lighter. Blend them in a little bit, and then we'll work our way into our into the face of the bobcat. And if you have to mix your color a second or third time, does not have to be the exact same shade because we will be adjusting it in a few moments. But it is good practice each time uh, you have to mix your color. Your brain's taking in a lot of information. So be kind to yourself, whether you're a beginner or a seasoned painter. And if you're painting swift like I am and your background is still wet, be very cautious as you are coming up next to the teal color with this lighter tan color. If you happen to get some of that paint in there, like I did right here, um, you can just wipe it off with a paper towel or your finger and then just reapply the paint. It's never the end of the world. All right, so we've got kind of our base here. We're gonna start putting a bit of a shadow element here and then we're gonna go a little bit lighter on his chest. So for that shadow element, I'm actually going to do a mixture of raw sienna and burnt sienna. Again, about a one to one ratio. And we're going to slap her imagining that we've got a bit of a shadow here from kind of his head being uh, in front of his body. So I'm going to slap this color in here like that. Super attractive. I'm going to throw a little bit more down there. And then again, I like to wipe off that excess paint just so I'm not applying more to the canvas. And then with that light pressure, I'm going to blend this into that base um, color, that base raw sienna. And again, just keeping that light pressure using just the tips of my bristles on the brush. Um, same thing with the background. If you end up moving your brush too much, like right here, and you lose that, just reapply that spot and then move your brush just a little bit less for that area. So again, I'd like to um, build on our skills that we learn. So we will repeat this process um, throughout the rest of the painting. So same thing that we did for our shadow element, we're gonna grab our pure white. Uh, this bobcat's a little bit lighter on his chest. 
So I'm going to slap some of that on there. Again, wipe off that excess paint. And again, the lighter color will diffuse much quicker into your base color compared to your dark color. So if you need to reapply, that is totally okay. And most of the stuff that I do for the videos and for teaching are merely suggestions. Take the parts that work for you and adjust and adapt for what you need for your skills at home. Again, be very careful as you're coming up next to your background there. And we've got a little bit of a highlight hanging out over here. And as you're watching the video, um, you are strengthening your power of observation. So you're looking at the places that I'm applying a specific color and then you're mimicking that on your canvas to the best of your ability. So it does not have to be perfect and it does not have to look exactly like mine. Um, paintings kind of like handwriting. We each have our own style. All right, so we're going to do a few more darker areas right here. So I'm going to grab that direct raw sienna or burnt sienna. The burnt sienna is more the reddish brown and kind of on the edge of the canvas because he's got kind of this nice dark shadow here. Um, and the picture that I'm looking at, I can actually see the full body. But we're just getting this kind of dark shadow, pulling it up into the ear. And same thing, just using that light pressure, blending it in. Let's get a little bit. And now here, I'm going to turn that brush sideways to create a few skinnier marks. And we're going to do that as we kind of go through a few different portions of the painting. So grabbing a little bit more of that burnt sienna. And then using that brush sideways, we'll do a little bit more after the background dries. And then we're going to do this with black in a minute too. Because again, our little bobcat has all these cute little spots that we have to get. So as I hold the brush sideways, you want to imagine that you're kind of moving the brush in the direction that the fur would be going. Um, so that way you're not making your marks in the exact same position all the time. All right, so actually that black isn't true, true black. So what I'm gonna do, we're gonna clean that brush. We're gonna grab some of this raw sienna and I'm gonna slap it over here closer to the black and then I'm gonna grab a tiny amount of black. And again, I like to kind of put it on the edge and then slowly work it into my color. But we're basically going for a dirty brown. And it's better to do it with a raw sienna compared to the burnt sienna because I don't really want that reddish tone to it. And there, that's actually pretty close because it is going to diffuse with the colors that we're putting on top of it. So same thing, I'm holding that brush sideways and moving my brush in the direction that the fur would be going. And we're going to start getting some of those spots on there. I'll get the excess water off my paint, or off my brush. There we go. And you will notice that it diffuses quickly. So again, if you have to mix your color a second or third time, and if you actually make it a little darker than it should, there we go, we'll add more black to this mixture. It'll be a little bit more bold as we apply it. There we go. That's a little closer to what I was looking for. So again, these are just tiny little dash marks. We're imagining that these are the markings on our bobcat. And again, they don't have to be exactly where I place them. Our brain fills in um, so many of the details as we look at it and just know that there's a hint of color somewhere. All right, I think this is pretty good for the body. We'll probably come back and intensify those spots a little bit, but it's starting to build our base. All right, oh, hi, Mike, hi, Jen. Glad you guys could uh join us and jen i'm using the sienna the raw sienna and then burnt sienna i don't have umber on here the umber is going to be more of like a greenish grayish black um, it would be a bit more of a cool color but you could actually on the on on this for this color that i'm making right here you could actually use the umber and the color that i used was the raw sienna and the black to make that sh that shade all right, so we're going to do the same thing as we move into the face of our cat, and then we'll get into um, that same kind of moving the brush in the direction that the fur would be going. All right, so going back to, and I'm going to add a touch of yellow to this mixture. So going back to that raw sienna and white, kind of that one-to-one -one ratio mixture. I'm going to add more white in there. 
And then to this, we're going to add a touch of yellow to it. And that yellow is going to warm it up. And again, start off light with your yellow addition. You can always add more. There we go. All right, so again, we're gonna place this in quite a few areas. I'm gonna leave a few spaces um, for almost kind of white or um, light creamy color. So again, just kind of mimic the place um, of where you see I put it on the canvas on yours. And I am going to just go right over these lines. We'll be adding them in in the next round. And I'm using student grade paint, so you might be able to still see those lines shining through um, through my paint. That's OK, just given the brand of the paint. And yep, my background's starting to dry. Okay. And the paint usually dries in about 15, 20 minutes. Again, bring it right up to that edge. And oh, I forgot to mention, uh, make sure you take a deep breath. I actually, I've been talking enough that I haven't held my breath yet to remind you. So even if you're not painting, still take that deep breath, just relax. I'm glad you're at least watching the video. And I have had a lot of people um, email and apologize for either missing the video or not painting along while I was painting. Uh, don't feel like you have to paint along with this because I'm doing a lot in a very short amount of time. And it is more to your benefit to uh, watch this video maybe the first time and then paint on the second round. So that way you can pause it and go more at your pace. Um, Cause like I said, I don't want you to feel like you have to keep up with the pace that I'm going. And through the process of teaching, I have learned that you have to explain things about three times, um, especially if you're completely going out of your comfort zone and you've never done what you're learning uh, before in your life. So most of my students have never painted before. They've shied away from it most of their life. So I do have to um, encourage them to, to paint, really. So I've found that while I was teaching, I explained it three times. So the first time that I explained the information, you were hearing it brand new. Second time, you're like, OK, it's making a little more sense. Third time, and hopefully after you've um, attempted it once or twice, then when you hear it, you're like, oh, okay, that makes more sense. So anytime that you're learning something, you kind of need to hear the information two or three times for it to fully sink in. All right, so we're getting to our base colors. We're gonna go back in and start adding some different shades on there. I'm gonna go start with the light first, just so I can get those colors in there, and then we'll go in with the dark shades. And let's just bring this closer to this guy. Nothing on the chin. And we got a little spot right here. There we go. All right, so that same mixture, I'm actually just gonna pull more white. We're going a little bit lighter. So right on the perimeter, I'm gonna mix that so I can pull in some of that color. Try and get that excess paint off. There we go. But we are going pretty close to white. And there we go. So if you're painting at home and you're realizing that your brush strokes are getting bigger and wider and wider, check your brush, see if you've got a lot of buildup where the bristles meet the metal. And if you've got a lot of buildup, wipe it off um, and then go back to applying your paint. All right, so for our light shade, this is gonna be these little cheeks. And if you need to move down to a smaller brush, feel free. Um, basically, anywhere there's white space on our canvas, the ears around the eyes and the mouth, um, everything except the eyes and the nose will be filling in with this color. And I am slightly overlapping uh, the light raw sienna color and blending just a touch with it. So if your paint's still wet as you're adding this color, feel free to blend it in with that raw sienna mixture. Those ears in there. 
And we are almost to the part. My favorite part where I feel like I can start painting is what we call the underpainting. And that means there's no canvas space left on um, your painting. And then from there, then you'll build your layers on top of that. And I like it because we look at our colors differently um, on top of another color or next to another color compared to that stark white blank white canvas from the beginning. So that's why I, that's why I feel like I've just begun the painting uh, once I kind of get closer to this point. So again, if you need to move down to that smaller brush, go right ahead. Oops, more white. And again, as you're painting, if you need to adjust your color after you've applied it to your canvas, totally okay. Art is not about picture perfect or getting it right from the first brush stroke. Um, it's more about learning and observing and adjusting on an ad as needed moment by moment basis. Just fill it in a few other little areas. We'll get that nose and the eyes in there, and then we're gonna start putting some other shades on top of it. But it's turning into a cute little bobcat kitten. Okay, so sticking with that small pointy brush, let's get those eyes in there. And the eyes, they're actually a pretty deep raw sienna, a little kind of a warm raw sienna. So I'm gonna pull some of this. I'm just gonna use the perimeter of the plate and doing probably a two parts raw sienna to a one part yellow. And we're gonna fill in this whole eyeball. And if you go over the eye, the pupil, the black, or if you go over that white dot, don't freak out. We can always reapply it. And again, with student grade paint, it is on the transparent side. So I'll probably put a second coat on here. So you might have to do that with your paint um, or you can apply it a little bit thicker and it gives you a bit more of an opaque coverage. So but for this one, I will be adding a second layer. All right, so that same little mixture that I was using, I'm actually gonna leave what's on my brush to make a new little pile right here. I'm gonna add a touch of red to it and that's way more red I need on my plate but just a tiny amount of red let's go a little more raw sienna and this gives us kind of an earthy reddish earthy brown not quite as dark as that one and this is pretty close to our little nose color And again, this one will probably get a second coat. All right. Okay, so while we're letting that dry, we're gonna go back up to the large brush. We're gonna go into a darker shade. We're gonna go back to that brown and black mixture, and we're gonna start putting the markings on. So if you need to make a little bit more of that mixture, go right ahead. And this one, again, I'm going to be holding that brush sideways and making little dash marks. And the easiest place is usually right by the eyes, those little Cleopatra eyeliner that comes out. And again, if this brush is too much, feel free to switch down to that small pointy brush. And as you do this, um, minding the pressure of your brush um, is going to be your friend. Light pressure is going to create some skinnier lines more pressure creates a little bit wider lines. If you have variety, totally okay. And again, this is one of those things that the more that you do it, the more your muscles remember what's going on and the easier it becomes. And I am, I'm not pushing too hard. So it's almost a bit of that pointillism method to where I'm just using the end of the brush breathe. 
haven't seen any bobcats in California. I did see a few when I lived in Arizona. And I just, I love their little wispies on their ears. All right, let's see. We've got quite a few hanging out on the top of his forehead. And again, every cat has different markings, even though they may look similar or be in similar positions. So again, your markings do not have to look exactly like my markings. Our cats are unique. All right, we've got a few more. We're gonna widen up and then we'll go back to that eyeliner. I'm gonna make that a little bit darker. And as you're working at home, if you need to turn your canvas sideways, upside down, anything like that, feel free to do that. I'm just keeping mine in the same orientation uh, just because I'm filming um, for you guys at home. So feel free to move your canvas if you need to put it on your lap, if you need your face two inches from it while you paint, go right ahead and do that. I tend to do that sometimes where I'm literally like my nose almost touches the canvas. But I don't really want you guys staring at the back of my head or my ponytail, so I will not be doing that for the demos. Get these little whiskers in here. And again, move down to the appropriate brush size for, com for your comfort level today. And as you're painting at home, uh, please email me photos of what you paint. Email them at paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com or tag me in the social media outlets at or hashtag paintwithlovejoy. Um, I know I got some emails this morning. I haven't been able to jump over to the Paint With Love Joy to reply to those, but they make me so happy in the mornings um, and evenings when I read the emails and reply. And uh, a lot of you are sending me multiple paintings that you've done and it's so awesome to see your guys's progress um, i hope you're seeing it at home and i've pointed it out to a few of you that have um, emailed me your photos but literally if you line up your paintings you can see your comfort level increase and your knowledge and what you've gained um, from each painting so maybe after you do four or five paintings line them all up and just assess and pat yourself on the back for stepping out of your comfort zone, doing something that you thought was challenging, and then also recognize, you know, where you're seeing your learning. So by taking your progress pictures or having that, it's one of the few times that we can visually document um, our learning curve. All right, I'm actually gonna move down to the pointy brush now. We will be moving into some black paint. Um, we're going to get those little ears. We're going to do more eyeliner. And I'm actually going to pull a little bit of that original color down into here. There's not much on this body, but a little bit. So I'm still using that same brown and black color combo right now as I finish um, some of the details on his mouth. And let's see. Let me go back up to the other brush. I've got a few little shadows in here inside the ears. I forgot about those. And these are a little bit longer brush strokes. We're gonna, we have some few little white hairs that we'll put on there. So I need this to dry before we do that. And let's see one more, then we're gonna move into black. There we go. And just making a few of these little spots on his body a little bit darker with that same mixture. All right, so now to the pointy brush, black paint, and we're gonna do eyeliner. Uh, we'll redo those pupils and around the nose. It's basically just going around the nose, uh, filling in those nostrils and the extra little designs. And those are on the traceable as well, so you can always reference that. And then now just doing eyeliner. And again, remember, play with that pressure of your brush. You wanna keep kind of a light pressure for this section. So if you need to practice on a scrap sheet of paper, feel free. 
And on this one, I'm gonna go ahead, I am gonna go over that pupil. And if you happen to go over that white spot, don't freak out. I'm gonna go ahead and do that on purpose on mine just so I can show you how to reapply that white dot. So um, leave, try to leave that white dot if you can, but if you go over it like this, totally okay. Don't freak out because your cat's gonna look like a zombie. A bobcat's going to look like a zombie, and I'm going to do the same thing to the other eye just so I can apply both catch lights at the same time. And again, that's just to show you guys at home, for those of you that paint over that, it's not a big deal. It's not the end of the world. And on this one, I did widen that pupil just a little bit. So again, as you're painting and you feel like changing something that I do or do not change, go for it, trust that. All right, so getting a, just a few little dots around the mouth, and then let's get these ears in there. So for the ears, um, just kind of the perimeter, let's see if I can do this so I don't block it with my arm. So you're going to kind of outline that ear first and we're just kind of going to the top and then we're going to give a little triangle, those little tips on there. And again, if you start getting a lot of buildup on your brush, wipe it off, bring those bristles back together. And then again, light pressure as you do that little tip on the ear. And they can be kind of clean or fuzzy. I've seen bobcats with both. I have seen some that have super long little tips. I think as the kittens, they're pretty short and they grow into some of those long, wispy little tips that they have. All right, so same thing on the other ear. If you need to, like I said, just place your finger um, somewhere where you're not going to put it in paint. You can use that as your pivot point or rest your forearm against the edge of the table. Just using kind of a little bit of that leftover paint to do the perimeter of the ear on that outside. Okay, so let's see. We got some highlights to throw in here. Let me see. Oh, nice. Nice, Chris and Shauna. I'm glad you're enjoying the video. And cool, Jen, that you get to see a bobcat while you were mountain biking. And Rhonda, yeah, they come into your yard. Cool, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I think if we left the white spot out, Denise, uh, Stephen King would be proud. Um, I am still terrorized by a few of his movies um, and even the books, too. Yeah, he's a great writer. Very suspenseful. So I will be adding that white dot on there. Otherwise, it's going to creep me out way too much. So since we were talking about it, let's go ahead and add that white dot. So I've got a clean, pointy brush. And again, you can reference your traceable for where they were. Um, you do want your black paint to be dry. Mine is not, um, but just let yours dry before you do it at home. We're going for that dot. And I do have mine a little slightly on the pupil and slightly on the eye color. It's called the catch light. All right, and I'm gonna go in with some pure white and a few other areas. We do have this nice little marking next to that eyeliner. Got a little bit underneath. Got a little bit on these little cheeks next to the nose. And again, I'm just kind of placing this right on top. Remember to get out of your chair and look at your painting from a distance of five to 10 feet away. And it looks entirely different from that distance. 
compared to the two feet in front of you while you're painting it. And as you get into final detail stages, um, get in the habit of doing that so that way you can look and go, okay, ooh, maybe I need lighter here, maybe I need darker here. But you have to kind of assess what it looks like from that distance um, so you can make the adjustments that are needed. And I'm kind of going in between those little whisker lines with the white. And it is pretty cool how much this white and even that pure black kind of gives us high contrast and makes certain things pop where other things were not in the past. Okay, so let's see. We've got a few more super, super light spots. And I'm actually going to move back up to this brush so I can hold it sideways and use that ankle. So again, whichever size brush is more comfortable for you, stick with that one. And I am going to use that straight white. We might diffuse it in a minute, but let's see. So again, I'm just making these little dash marks in the direction of the fur. And we'll start doing a little bit of the chest fur. Actually, let's start with the chest fur to overlap those. So again, light pressure. Every two or three brush strokes, grab more paint. Rest your forearm against the edge of the table as needed. And I am just using just the edge of the brush. And this is where um, we've talked about the flat brushes that either have the straight edge or the curved. This one has the curved edge. It's called a filbert. But the straight edged brushes work really well um, for this type of mark, mark making. All right get a little bit here on his face. And as you're making these little hairlines, um, you do want to overlap those brush strokes. And again, try to not have them go in the exact same direction. You do want to kind of move your brush again in a few different directions. So if you can remember or imagine that each brush stroke is a strand of fur, um, so moving it in that direction just kind of helps. And then when you take my Paint Your Pet class, uh, which is on my online school, Paint with Lovejoy, uh, for long-haired animals, we talk about the same thing. So imagining that each brush stroke is a strand of fur that you are painting. And it helps your brain just kind of imagine like, okay, it moves this way. So same thing as we get into the ears and those longer little inner ear hairs. I'm just making longer dash marks with that. So going back over to this side underneath the eye. And these, I'm going to start overlapping into the body. And again, remember every two or three brush strokes, grab more paint because you're going to get into a groove of applying this. Um, but you want to keep making sure that you're applying paint and not just getting good motor skills. And if you're painting at home and maybe you add too much white, uh, maybe it gets too dense. You can always go back to that middle color and I'll do a little bit of it and do the same thing. You can go back and forth with this style of application and go back to your light colors, your dark colors, and just keep adjusting. And by doing this, um, you're increasing the depth on your painting and increasing the fluff value on your animal. And who doesn't like a fluffy little animal? And hopefully you are finding that while you're painting right now, you are so relaxed, maybe zoning out to the sound of my voice or just watching the video, but you've forgotten about the outside world. You've spaced and zoned out for enough that you feel a little more relaxed. And that truly is the objective of painting as a therapy. So please remember this space that you're feeling, this relax that you're feeling, and bring it into your everyday life. Because as we start developing our new normals in this world, um, bringing creativity back into your life is only gonna be for your benefit as the stresses of the world continue to do their thing.
So it is up to you to find your creative outlets um, to counter the other stresses in your life. And if painting's not it, please find another one. Music, drawing, ceramics, anything, but find some form of a creative outlet for yourself. Because I want happier people, people on this planet. And I would have to say quite a few of my students are pretty happy when they're leaving the studio. So I just want more people painting. All right, so I'm gonna go in with a that lighter color again, and we'll do the same thing to where we overlap the brush strokes. And then I think I'll do one more color that will bring us to the conclusion. So this looks like it's gonna be probably a 50 minute video. It's not bad. Awesome. Okay, so we're going back to that white raw sienna and a little yellow mixture. I still have a little bit of it right here. I'm good, I actually have more than I thought. Okay, so again, if you have to mix that, it was the white and raw sienna, about a one-to-one -one ratio, and then add a touch of yellow to it. So we're gonna do those same brush strokes, but I'm gonna bring some of that color down to here, and then I will overlap a little bit on the white, uh, the white strokes that we were making. And even here, as I'm adding it down here, it's not enough. So I'm actually gonna add a touch more white and a touch more yellow, because it's a little too close to the same color. I want it to stand out a little bit more. So again, feel free to adjust for what you might need in the middle of your painting, even if it goes in a slightly different direction. There we go. So now doing a little bit over those little white marks for that chest, that fluffy little chest. Do have a bit more of a highlight on the center and this is again giving me just that second coat a little more opaque coverage all right so now i'm going to grab that raw sienna by itself we're going a little bit darker Oops, got a little bit of black in there. We're gonna work it into it. Bob Ross had it right, little happy accidents. And if you end up having a happy accident in your painting and later on when you're showing the painting and people go, oh, I love that, it's awesome. Don't tell them it's a happy accident. Go, I planned that. I did that on purpose. Take credit for it. So you'll notice that as you show your friends more and more about your artwork and what you're creating, Hopefully it's encouraging them to give it a try. Um, but it's also more about the process of painting and how you felt while you were painting, how much you learned, what you're gonna do different next time. Um, so talk about that when you show your uh, paintings to your friends and then they'll think you just are an even more amazing painter and they'll want, they're gonna wanna paint with you. But just keep exploring your skills and sharing it with others. Oh, and we're going to go one shade darker. We're going to go back to that black and tan color combo in a minute. Let's get a little bit more in the ears. So I'm still on that raw sienna right now. We're going to go just one shade darker in a minute. Let's get a little bit down here in the chest. So like I said, just this kind of back and forth with these little brush strokes, these little dash marks. You can do this a lot, and this is very similar to how I teach that Paint Your Pet class. And yeah, thanks for the endorsement, Jen. Glad you liked it. Yes, and Rhonda, amazing how much you can accomplish in a very short amount of time. Though I still run out of hours in the day to accomplish everything that I want to accomplish. If I could have a duplicate me to just do video editing and then the real me gets to do all the painting, uh, I'd be very happy with that. All 
All right, so one shade darker, and then I think that's gonna bring us into the conclusion of the painting. Ooh, I'm gonna do one more on the eyes, and then I think that'll be it. So let me do the eyes right now. And the eyes, that was the raw sienna with yellow, a little more yellow. And again, just one more layer, thickens it up and gives me a bit more opaque coverage. Do make sure that your paint, that white dot and the black pupil are dry before you do your second coat. All right, so I'm actually just gonna leave that raw sienna that's on my brush right there, jump over to the black, just pick up a little bit of that. That's gonna bring me to the conclusion of that painting, or that uh, color. All right, and just basically going back over, making those little dash marks. And this one's a little bit lighter than what I was using before. There we go. And again, I'm just using the end of the brush. There we go. We need a few of these little overlapping. And just making sure these overlap that background just a little bit. And here, if you need to turn your canvas upside down, um, that's what I would do if I wasn't filming, just because it's a little bit easier. All right. So this was a fun painting today. Um, I saw, I haven't put in yesterday, I have not put yesterday's um, suggestions on the list yet. So I will do that this afternoon. Um, and I think a few of the emails that came through, I saw on the subject line said new topics. So I'll add that to the list as well. But feel free to leave a comment with what you want me to paint in the future. To see what I am painting in the future, you can jump to the main page, scroll down, and you can see the future streams. And like I said earlier, I did get at least the next seven traceables up on the website. So you can see the composition of what it'll be. And the link is in the description box below. And yeah, jump over to my main school, paintwithlovejoy.com. Keep painting. And yeah. So let me know questions. Let me know what you want painted in the future. Yeah. And let's see, tomorrow I believe is Bryce Canyon, so that should be a nice one. We'll be using similar color palette except for the teal. We'll be placing that with blue instead. Um, let's see, any other questions? Uh, for the patron stuff, I actually already have all those scheduled out. Um, and the turtle traceable, I'm actually thinking which turtle traceable. I don't think I have a turtle traceable yet. Um, the seahorse or the silhouette turtle, there's no traceable for that one. So hopefully that's the one that you're working, thinking of. Um, the canvas size that I'm on right now, this is an eight by 10 panel. And the panel just means it's a little bit thinner, thinner where a stretched canvas is gonna be about a quarter of an inch thick. And if you're painting on a stretched canvas, I do recommend that you carry the um, canvas over from yesterday. Or, oh my gosh, sorry, I was trying to answer a question and uh, read a question at the same time. So for the stretch canvas, carry that color around the side. And let's see, the turtle was from the other day. I am totally spacing the turtle, but I will look and see if I can find it. Um, and I'll shoot you an email with it, Jen. Okay, so yeah, I think that takes us into the conclusion of this painting. Uh, Jen, I'll send you the email with the turtle on it. And yeah, so hope you guys have a great Saturday. I will see you all tomorrow to paint Bryce Canyon and keep getting creative and having fun. So take care, cheers.